Hello everyone and welcome back to the X-Ring. I hope you're doing well this week. So I had an idea. If you've ever shot PRS or any type of sniper match, at some point you're probably going to have to learn how to shoot a moving target. So what we're going to do today is we're going to time targets, show you how to estimate the speed, because you're probably going to know the distance, and how to input all that information into your Kestrel to give you the proper lead to be able to shoot that moving target. So here recently at Altus, at the XC International Classic, which was a couple weeks ago, we had a pipe stage, which was five positions, two shots from each position. Originally the target was supposed to be at 500, but that mover was broken, so they moved it to 300. And out of the 80 shooters or so, I think there were five of us that actually cleaned that. So I was able to clean that, and I think with the information that I'm gonna share with you guys, it's gonna help quite a bit, especially for the rimfire guys that might be shooting nationals or something where you're always gonna see a mover. This can actually help you input that data into your Kestrel. We'll go step by step, so definitely stick around for this one. All right, so for some of you that might have the Streelock app, they do have a position in there for moving targets. And so if you do have Streelock, just be careful. Don't do any type of updates or anything like that or delete it because you know Streelock is going away. So this will be specifically tailored to the Kestrel app specifically. And so if you're shooting a moving target, yes, you could always trust the advice of other shooters and assume that the target is moving X miles per hour. I think it's your responsibility as a shooter to know how to actually time how fast that target is going. So first thing you're gonna to need to know is how fast the target is moving. It's also important to know your wind. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But right now, we're gonna have a target set out at 300 yards. I'm gonna go out there at 300 yards and I'm gonna have you guys time me and we'll talk about exactly what you need to do to figure out using your reticle, you're gonna to have to have some type of spotting scope with a reticle or at least a rifle with a reticle to be able to time how far it takes somebody or some object to move. Now, once we get that miles per hour, then we'll be able to calculate what that lead is. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so for this first example, I am at 300 yards. So you're gonna need to know what your elevation hold is for 300 yards. That's a given. So that's the first thing you need to know. You don't want to forget to put your elevation in there, okay? Because that's gonna be first and foremost. Now let's pretend we have zero wind for now. So what we wanna do is we wanna time how fast something moves across a certain distance. All right, so we're gonna assume that all of your data on your Kestrel is good. So we know that the target is at 300 yards. So we have that marked there at 300. We know we're gonna be holding somewhere around seven tenths of elevation. This is the Falcor. This is the data that I actually used for the match. So the first thing I did was I dialed seven tenths. And then what I needed to do was figure out how fast this target was going. I try not to ever rely on other people to tell me how fast they think it's going because your ballistics, your data is going to be different based on your speed. So we're going to hit target. So there's the target range, 300 yards, direction of fire, 218 degrees. We're not going to worry about L degree or L cosine, but right there, target speed miles per hour. Let's go down one again and just to see. So wind direction we have at 12 o'clock. I've got it zeroed out just to make this a little easier. So target speed, let's go ahead and select that. Once we select the target speed, we can change our units if we like. If you don't use miles per hour, you can still use feet per second, meters per second, kilometers per hour, all of that. So let's just go back to miles per hour and we're going to estimate. So we're gonna now tell it, well, the range is 300 yards and the movement, we wanna go across how much we can measure. So in this case, I have 20 mils on my spotting scope that I can measure from left to right for this example. And the bigger that gap is, the better it's gonna be for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and look at the target. I'm gonna walk across at 300 yards and let's see what we get for the time to cover 20 mils. All right, so I'm gonna have you guys play along and what we're gonna do is get your stopwatch on your watch or get your stopwatch on your phone and what we're gonna do is time this movement. Now, remember, it doesn't have to be 20 mils. If you only have 10 mils that you can measure across or five mils or whatever it is, you just need to be able to know exactly when to start and stop it and you're just going to put into the Kestrel, is it 20 mils, is it 10 mils or whatever. And then as you're observing it at that distance, you just want to time it. 
The other thing is, as I walk across, you could start it as soon as my chest hits the mark, the stadia line, or you could do it where the center of the body hits the stadia line. I typically don't use center of target. I just do edge to edge instead of middle to middle. It's entirely up to you, but it's a little easier for me to time that. So here we go. Let's try it on your own. Let's go ahead and get your stopwatches and everything ready. All right, so I've measured this multiple times and that comes out to 2.88 seconds. Remember, everyone's reaction time is a little different, but close enough to 2.9 seconds or 2.88 if that makes you happy. So now that we're armed with that 2.9 seconds, what we're gonna do is adjust our time to 2.9 seconds. And what we're gonna do then is right here, the speed, you guys see that is 4.2 miles an hour. So that's your answer. You know the mover is moving at 4.2 miles per hour. All right, so now you have all the information you need. You know that the target is moving 4.2 miles an hour. So you've got that set. You've taken multiple stopwatch measurements. And remember, you know, when you're shooting targets at a match, they kind of move like this across the screen, okay? In the real world, people don't move like that. And they'll be bladed. So it's still time is time, all right? You can use the edge of the target as it gets there. But either way, now you have a miles per hour. So what you're going to do with that miles per hour is once you've established that, then you're just going to go to your range card setting. And under range card, what you're going to see is you can toggle right or left for your options because you don't really need to know your wind hold at this moment. What you need to know is what your lead is. So if we scroll over, you're going to see lead at 2.21. So if you're shooting a mill-based reticle, I know that I need to hold 2.2 mils in front of that target. Now there's a couple of ways to engage moving targets. You can do a tracking to where, let's say you have your reticle and let's say I'm moving, you gotta know which direction you're moving because it's gonna switch if it gets to the end. And typically guys, what they'll do is they'll have, let's say a barrel here and a barrel here. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage from the match but the target will start moving and what it'll do is when it gets behind the barrel they won't allow you to shoot it and so you've got to engage it and then what it'll do is it'll change directions it'll come out it'll go this way so as it's moving you have to lead that so you're going to put your crosshairs in front of that approximately 2.2 mils okay in that case so make sure you're in front of that. Now, if you're gonna track it, what you're doing is you're holding 2.2 mils of lead in front of it and you're tracking the gun at the same time. I don't recommend doing that. Um, that is the tracking method. If you're gonna do that, make sure that you have a bipod that actually pans. Otherwise, it's gonna be trying to skip. I think a better way is to actually do what we call the ambush method. And let's say this is your center dot, your zero, zero, right? And let's say this is your two mil hold, and this is 2.2. You're just gonna go out in front of it as this target's moving. And then let's say this is 2.2 mils, boom. As soon as it hits that 2.2 mil mark, you're gonna fire because the bullet's actually trying to go here, but your target is going to intercept it, okay? So basically this is going to be the ambush method, okay? But as you change directions, this is your point of aim. This is your 2.2 mil hold boom, hits there, you fire, and it should intersect it. So it's that simple, it's not that hard, you just need to practice it, and unfortunately, a lot of people never get to practice that except at a match environment because most ranges don't have movers unless you're at a military base or something like that. All right, so I hope that helps. However, you do still have to consider the wind, okay? That's one thing that I said I would touch on. Let's say I am your target, okay? And let's say I'm not moving, but let's say you have a wind that is blowing and you're having to hold off plate, let's say four tenths, okay, for the distance you're shooting at. Now, it really depends on which direction that wind is coming, but let's say the wind is going this way and you're having to aim off target four tenths of a mil, okay, because of that wind. Well, now that you have a moving target, so that wind is coming this way, we have to think of what that's doing in addition to the bullet whenever it's moving. Conversely, what happens when it's moving in the same direction? 
So you're going to have to do the math on that. You can still do the wind calculations, I and mean, we could simply do that, and I could show you, but hopefully you guys are kind of versed on your wind holds or at least using it as an estimate um, for those targets. But remember, you're going to have to add or subtract uh, based on that wind value, okay? In the best case scenario, it's a zero wind, and you know it's 2.2 .2 mils instead of having to hold 2.2 .2 plus the four tenths, so it would be 2.6, or in the other case, it'd be 1.8. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I'm going to do a, also do a video on, uh, I get a lot of questions about how I come up with my dope charts for 22 rimfire. So, you know, the process of when to true out muzzle velocity and when to do your DSF. I don't mess around a lot with BC values. Um, I know a lot of guys will start playing around with those numbers. It doesn't change it a whole lot, but the way that I do it seems to work well enough for me. Uh, at least in these matches to where I think it works well. So we'll do that here shortly. I hope this video helps some of you guys out, especially at your next match. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.